There are a lot of cameras on the market today for streamers to choose from. And whether you're at the very beginning of your streaming journey or you're a few years down the road and you're looking for that professional camera upgrade for your stream, it's kind of hard to know what to expect, what the camera is going to look like, what, what you're looking for in a new camera. It's something that just you kind of have to figure out on your own. But today's video is hopefully going to help you with that process and make it a little bit easier. I'm going to be taking the three cameras that I've used for the last three years, which happen to be three of the most popular cameras streamers are using. I'm going to be putting them side by side and showing you exactly what to expect and exactly what each camera looks like. Now, before we jump into this camera comparison, I want to give you a little background on who I am. My name is Eagle Garrett, and I am a full-time partner Twitch streamer at twitch.tv slash Eagle Garrett. I'd love to see you over on the channel. Feel free to swing by, talk technology, talk about cameras or, or whatever's on your mind, or just come hang out with us. We'd love to see you over there. But I've been doing this for a little over three years now. And in the last three years, I've been able to use each one of the cameras that we're looking at today as my primary streaming camera. And so a lot of people have started kind of where I started, and that was with the Logitech C920. But today we're not gonna be looking at the C920, and I'll tell you why. When I first got my Logitech C920 and I plugged it in, I noticed that the focus was off with that camera. And after tinkering with it for a while and trying to go in and adjust the focus settings and turn it to manual focus only and do all this kind of stuff, I found out through the internet that some of the Logitech C920 webcams actually had a problem with their, their focus ring inside of the actual webcam unit. And my webcam was faulty, it, the, the focus was slightly out. So there was, you know, ways to try to fix it and all this kind of stuff. And after it was all said and done, I just sent it back and I decided to, instead of getting another C920, upgrade to the Logitech C922. It's not that much more expensive, I think maybe a $20 difference but it was a step up from the Logitech C920. And when I got the camera, something that I noticed is it definitely had a little bit better color accuracy and just felt a little bit, I don't know, a little bit better overall as a camera. And so I started out with the Logitech C922 as my primary webcam. So the first camera that we're looking at today is actually the Logitech C922. And here it is right here. And one of the first things that you'll notice is that the background is really bright, but I kind of look a little washed out. And something that these webcams have a hard time dealing with that I've I've run into over the years is, is really heavy backlighting or really bright backlighting. So because I have a, a DJ strip back there that I can control from up here, I'm going to turn it down. And you'll notice that as I turn down these lights, now again, they're very bright lights, so it doesn't surprise me that they have issues with this. Uh, DJ lights happen to be a little bit extra bright because they're meant for stages and I use them for my streaming room So it might be a little overkill But if I turn it down, you can tell that the Logitech C922 cleans up quite a bit and it actually looks really nice um, Now it definitely is a webcam and you're gonna notice a big difference between a Logitech C922 and you know professional DSLRs But for what it is and for the money, it's a pretty solid webcam uh, Now a couple things to note about this webcam. It looks it looks this way if it's fully blown up on the screen uh, pretty nice look overall. You could use it for YouTube if you were starting out a YouTube channel and wanted to get some content out there or even for just chatting on uh, on Twitch or some of these other streaming platforms. You could just, you know, sit here and talk. And it's going to look overall pretty nice, especially if you go into Logitech's G-Hub software, which you can download for free and you go and tinker with the settings. You can tinker with the saturation and the brightness, contrast, those sorts of things. And if you tinker with those, as well as adjust your, you know, your face lighting and your back lighting, the camera's gonna clean up pretty nicely. There's a few things though that you can't control with this camera. And one of those things is that this camera looks a little soft in my opinion. The focus, even though is much better than that original Logitech C920 that I used, the focus is still soft. It's not the sharpest webcam on the market. And uh, you know, it's, it's gonna do a good job, but if you're wanting that tack sharp focus, if you're wanting something that looks a little bit better than this quality, then maybe starting out here, or maybe if you've been here and you're wanting to do an upgrade, this camera might be the one that you need to move away from and go into the next category. But I will say overall, this is a great starting camera. It'll do great for you if you're starting out on Twitch, or even if you've been streaming for a while, you really adjust those settings, it's gonna still continue to do well for you. It just depends on where you're at with your streaming journey and what your focus is 
for your stream. Now, another thing that I wanna mention about this camera is that the field of view it has is actually about a 78 degree field of view, which means that what you see right now with me sitting here is as wide as this camera is gonna get. Now you can always go in and, and zoom it in a little bit or crop it in if you want to, but you're not gonna get any wider than this. So this is exactly how far that this camera can see. And I'm sitting probably about a foot, foot and a half in front of the camera. So uh, it's a pretty good field of view, 78 degrees. It's kind of standard, kind of normal. But we're getting ready to move from this camera over to our next camera, which is the Logitech Brio. And this is the Logitech Brio. Now, as you can tell, a big, massive change that you see right off the bat is that the field of view is actually much wider. And it's a 90 degree field of view. And it can actually change. If you go into the Logitech G Hub software, like uh, we were talking about a minute ago with that Logitech C922, you can actually change it. You can bump it down to 78 degrees. So this is actually the same field of view that the C922 had. And you can even take it down to 65 degrees and zoom it way in or crop it way in. But the 90 degree field of view is really nice because it's one of the widest field of views that any webcam has on the market right now. And Logitech just came out with another camera called the Logitech Stream Cam, which is supposed to be a, an upgraded version of their, their Logitech webcam software or uh, webcam devices, I guess I should say. But I don't know anything about the stream cam. I haven't, I haven't used it myself. I only know what I've seen in videos or, or reviews. And it looks like a solid camera, maybe one to check out. But I do know about this Brio. And the Brio's 90 degree field of view and the fact that it's much sharper than the C922 we were just looking at makes this camera a definite upgrade to your, uh, you know, if you've started out with that C920 or the 922, it's, it's gonna bring that quality up. And as you can tell, it, it looks pretty good. Like this is a pretty good looking webcam. And I've enjoyed using this quite a bit. It was my main daily driver for a long time. And when I used it or when I first implemented it, people in my stream instantly knew a difference. They were like, dude, that new webcam looks awesome. So a couple things to note, it has a better focus. It's a lot sharper. Uh, it's got a better color range and it also does better in lower light. In fact, the background, uh, you can see the background. If I lower the background even more, I feel like it makes the camera do even better. So the camera, I probably don't even need these lights that I have up here. I could probably turn one of them off or turn one of them down and this camera would still do a great job. So that's a couple things that are positive about the Brio. One of the negative things about the Brio that I've actually discovered over time is that if you look right here around my microphone and, and I'm looking to make sure I'm pointing at the right thing, but if you look here or you'll look right along the edge of this, this boom arm right here, uh, you'll notice a slight haze, a slight red haze. And I've tried wiping off the lens, I've tried doing everything that I know to do, but there's just a little bit of a color haze around this boom arm. And to get rid of it, I have to drop the brightness and the contrast way down, but when I do that, the camera looks terrible. And so I have to, you know, I have to balance color and brightness with everything else. And so you do get a little bit of a haze. It's not something you're gonna notice, when, especially when these cameras are shrunk way down to be face cams when you're playing a video game. You're not gonna notice this kind of stuff as much. They're gonna look fantastic. And it's actually gonna be really hard to tell the difference between the Brio and the 922 when it's shrunk way down. But there are some things like that that you need to take into account, especially if you're looking at doing like, you know, some YouTube work. Although this is gonna be a great camera and an upgrade from that 922, it's still not gonna be as crystal clear as you might want. And so if you're sitting at a 922, this is a great stepping stone upgrade. But if you're looking for that next level and you're saying, you know what, I want to step out of the webcam game and I want to step into the DSLR game, then our next camera is probably going to be the camera for you. And that is the Sony a6400. And this is the Sony a6400. This is actually the camera that we started this video on. And I've been doing all of my YouTube videos on this camera, but this is a full fledged DSLR camera, which means it has interchangeable lenses. It's got fully featured uh, camera and video options. And on top of that, it's got a flip up screen in the back that you can flip all the way up and see yourself in the screen. So I don't even have to, when I'm looking at this camera, if I wanna see where I'm at in the frame, I can actually just look right above the lens and see myself. And you know, it gives me all the information for the camera, including the focus box, which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute, but it's a really, really nice camera. One thing that you need to take into consideration if you're looking to go from a webcam to a DSLR is that it's not as easy as just buying the camera and plugging it in and you're ready to go. Webcams, they're plug and play. With those last two cameras we looked at, you plug them into your computer and they pick up in your OBS software and boom, you're, you're set to go. You adjust the settings, you adjust the colors and you're ready. With a DSLR, there are actually a few different components you need to buy, and so they can be quite expensive to get into originally, 
but they'll definitely be worth it when we start talking about the features that you're getting when you upgrade to a camera that's high quality. So what are some of these things that you're gonna have to buy? What are some of the components that you're gonna have to consider in the price when you're going to a DSLR? One of the big ones is that you need a stand or some kind of arm or, or, or something to hold the camera because it's not gonna mount on top of your monitor the way webcams do. Webcams just kind of sit right up there. But with a DSLR, you need a, a stand to actually put it on. I'm gonna have a link down in the description for all the stuff we're talking about today, including the arm that I use for this Sony a6400. And the arm is actually a really, really cool clamp style arm, and it will adjust to almost any configuration to hold this camera in place around your monitors or around your rig setup. So I'm gonna put that down in the description of this channel along with all the components we're talking about today but you need to take that in consideration first. The other thing you're gonna need to think about is of course a lens for the camera, because unless you get a lens for the camera, it's not gonna do anything for you. You also need an AC power supply to power the camera, and you're gonna need a mini HDMI to HDMI cord to plug into your computer. But that also leaves us with an Elgato cam link so that your computer can recognize this DSLR as a webcam so that OBS can pick up the picture. So right there, you're looking at like, like three or four, maybe five different components total that you're gonna need to step into a DSLR camera. But the benefit outweighs the cost in the long run. And let me explain why. If you've been using webcams for a while and you're ready to take your stream quality to the next level, then these DSLRs can offer you things that the webcams just simply can't do. And some of those things are things like focus. This camera has one of the best autofocus systems on the market. Now there are other cameras that you can use that are not as expensive as the Sony a6400. You can get cheaper versions. You can get more expensive versions if you want to. But one of the reasons why I went with the Sony a6400 is the autofocus system. It's autofocus at the time that this camera came out was one of the most advanced autofocus systems on the market. And even though they've upgraded some of their cameras firmware wise, to have some of these same autofocus features, the Sony a6400 came native with it. And uh, let me just show you the let me just show you the autofocus. Let me just show you. Let's say that I hold my hand up to the camera lens like this. Normally, a camera would focus on the largest, biggest thing, the closest things to the lens, but not the Sony a6400. You can tell right now that half of my face is covered up by my hand. But unless I put my hand all the way in front of my face, which I just did, boom, there we go. It focuses on my hand. As soon as my face comes back into the shot, we're back on my face. And that's because this camera has been set up to face track and it has an amazing ability to snap right to your face and stay on your face. With that little flip screen, I can actually see there's a box that literally locks onto my face and as I move around, it's following me no matter what. And even if I put half of my hand in front of my face, it still knows that this half of my face is still a face and it stays right there on my face. And only when I cover up my eyes does that autofocus go away and snap on whatever you're showing. This makes it extremely convenient for streamers because when you're streaming or you're getting up and moving around or running to the back of your room or whatever, this focus system is gonna follow you and it's gonna stay locked on so you're always gonna be looking good and always gonna be in focus. Another thing that this camera does well is that when you show something up close, especially if you get the lens that I'm getting ready to talk to you about, look at that right there, that's the lens cap for this Sigma lens we're using, and it blurs out everything. Now, why does it do that? Because of the lens we have on this camera. The depth of field that this lens gets in conjunction with this camera is absolutely insane. And I can get this lens cap real close and show it off. And as soon as I pull it away, we're right back to focus on my face. And so we're gonna talk about the lens here in a minute, but I just wanna show you guys that that focus system for a streamer is absolutely crucial because no matter what you're doing, you're always gonna be in focus and looking good, crystal clear and sharp. And even if you like turn your head or do whatever, it's still gonna know that you're a person. So I love the autofocus on this camera. Another thing, the lens, which we just kind of mentioned a minute ago, the lenses that you can get for DSLR cameras are phenomenal because then you can, you can get a different lens, swap out for your current environment, your current studio, and make it look exactly the way you want it. The current lens that I have on this camera is actually a Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture lens. And if you don't know anything about cameras or lenses or anything like that, I'll explain what that means. 16 millimeters is the, the angle of the lens, how wide this lens is able to see. The field of view of this lens is a little bit wider than the C922, but it's not as wide as the Logitech Brio. The Logitech Brio was a 90 degree field of view. This camera has more of like a 73 to like 80 degree field of view, somewhere in there. Uh, but it's still wide enough to get in most of my 
my background, most of my, you know, my stream room, but not be too wide. It's not too wide where I, you know, I need to go and make a ton of adjustments. So it's, it's about the sweet spot for me. I'm actually sitting about a foot and a half away from this camera, maybe even closer than that. I can reach out and touch this camera, but look at what happens. When I reach out, my entire hand is blurred. In fact, my hand right here is blurred. I'm in focus. If I was to switch and put my hand in front of this, let it focus, look how blurry I am. Look how blurry my microphone is. We're talking about maybe a foot apart and within a foot, the depth of field from this lens is absolutely insane. So this is gonna give you that cinematic, really creamy background, the bokeh in the background. It's gonna give you that cinematic look that people desire without having to have a bunch of extra lights. This lens, because it's got that 1.4 aperture, which is how much light the lens can take in, not only affects the depth of field or you know how shallow the depth of field is, the fact that my hands up here, I'm blurred out completely. Boom, there we go. It's not just that, it's also how much light can come into the camera. So the lens that I got for this camera was absolutely perfect for streaming. Because then with a room that's kind of dark, I've got a backlight and I've got one face light and a, a light that's bouncing off the wall. That's all I need. And so it gives you that feel of like, hey, he's a gamer, he's sitting in a dark room, he's got some cool RGB lights back there, but he still looks perfectly lit, he still looks perfectly sharp and in focus. That's what a DSLR can do over webcams. With webcams, you kind of have to set it and then leave it there. It's just, it is what it is. So that's a couple of huge benefits of this DSLR. And if you get this camera body, this particular Sony a6400, and you get the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture lens, you're gonna get a, an image that looks exactly like this. But another thing to look at, another thing to consider is the fact that this camera right here does not have a problem with the backlighting the way that the Brio or the Logitech C922 does. If I turn my lights in the background all the way up, look at this. I can blast those lights back there and this camera is rocking like a champion. It's not having any problems. I still am perfectly lit and the background is really, really nice and bright. And it just, it, it balances it so well. Look what happens though, if I switch back to the Brio, look at what the Brio looks like now that the background is super, super bright. Look at that, I look terrible. <laughs> I mean, it looks terrible. And the reason why is because, again, I need to turn that backlighting all the way down here, super low, and this Brio cleans up. But if I turn it up, it's not gonna be able to handle it. It just cannot, it can't differentiate. It wants to focus on the lighting back there because that is the most present lighting. With a, with a DSLR though, you don't have that problem. This thing can handle it like a champion. Uh, another thing that I love about this is the, the, the overall professional look of the camera. When you step into a DSLR, over webcams, you're gonna get a professionalism with the camera that is, is definitely noticeable. In fact, at the moment that I switched to this camera, everyone in chat saw a massive upgrade. More than the Brio, more than, than anything else that they had seen in a while, they said, hey, your camera looks insane. Like, how do you get that blurry background and all that kind of stuff? And I was like, hey, it's this new DSLR and it's this lens that I put on it. And so you guys need to start thinking about that. These are expensive components. This is an expensive upgrade for a streaming rig. But if you're at that place where you're really looking for that next upgrade to take your stream game to the next level, and you're kind of saying, hey, I've, I've upgraded everything else, and, and I you know, kind of want to step out of the webcam area, get into DSLRs, this is a great one to go with. This is not the most expensive camera out there. You can actually get more expensive cameras with more expensive lenses, and they are going to look insanely awesome. But there's only so much quality that you can retain when you're streaming to a platform with a capped bit rate or when you're streaming in general just because of your data output and things like that. So you really need kind of you kind of need to think about the return on your investment. Are you getting a diminishing return by spending thousands of dollars on a camera when you could spend, you know, twelve hundred dollars on a camera setup and get a fully fledged professional looking stream in my opinion you don't really need much more than this right now for being a streamer now if you're going to do youtube content creation and you're looking for some really cinematic stuff to record in 4k and you you want this whole assortment of lenses maybe it does make more sense to get with you know one of these bigger dslrs that's even more professional and, and higher grade but this honestly the sony a6400 is going to be able to do all of that and more it's got great pictures it's got great 4k video if you use a, a a memory card and in fact this whole entire video is being recorded through obs and through this camera and the other two cameras i'm not using an sd card in this camera at all it's all through obs all in 1080p high definition 
and uh, it's just the way this lens and this camera looks. When you stream, if you have this rig, this is how it's gonna look for you. Now, a couple things to note, guys. Whether you're looking at DSLRs in general or you're looking at this Sony a6400 particularly, you're gonna need to find a camera with a clean HDMI out. And what that means is that the signal from the camera that goes to the Elgato cam link and into your OBS needs to not have all of the little menus around the screen of your camera. Whenever you get a, a digital camera, you know how it's got like the picture profiles and you can adjust the, the, the exposure levels and things like that. And it's got all these little meters. You need a clean HDMI out because you don't want all that on the camera whenever it's running into OBS. So whatever camera you look at, make sure it's got a clean HDMI out. With this camera, you will need an AC power adapter and a mini HDMI to full HDMI cord in order to plug that into your computer and keep the camera running for long periods of time. But it's gonna look professional, guys. And this is kind of the, the next upgrade. After you get to that Brio and you wanna step out of webcams, you go with something like this, or maybe even the, the little brother, the Sony A5100, which is even cheaper. Uh, doesn't quite have all the features or the same autofocus system, but it's very, very close. Um, so that's always an option as well. One thing I want to tell you guys, though, about this camera is it does have a, a, a slight issue. If you leave it running for six or seven hours, this has only happened to me like one or two times in the last year. But if you are in a really hot streaming room, like, for instance, my stream room, when I close my door, gets extremely hot. And the reason why is because I have two PCs in here and they run. They run pretty hot sometimes. I've got lights in here. I've got four monitors. It just gets warm in here. And so when that happens, if I don't turn on my ceiling fan or crack my door, then this camera, when it gets to a certain a certain level, a certain heat, it will actually shut itself off. And that's in order to protect the components inside the camera. That's happened to me a couple of times because I didn't pay attention to how warm it was getting. I was getting hot, but I was also focused on the game. So I just didn't do anything about it. But uh, as soon as that happens, the camera will shut off. All you have to do is turn the camera off for a minute or two, turn your fan on or open your door and then flip the camera back on, you'll be good to go. So one thing to note, that's the only thing I've run into with this camera that's been any kind of problem. Everything else has been absolutely amazing, uh, but it's something to note if you're looking at moving into a DSLR. Now, we've talked about each of these cameras and I've shown you each one individually, but now I wanna show you each of these cameras side by side and see if you guys can tell which camera is which. Before we switch, I'm gonna turn the backlighting back down so that the other two cameras look decent because they cannot handle the lighting being so bright as we have seen already. <laughs> We're gonna turn that back lighting down and then I'm gonna go to a scene right here where you can see all three cameras. So here we are, all three cameras. And before I tell you which one is which, I want you guys to take a second, pause the video right now and tell me in the comments below which camera you think is which. Okay, so you've taken your guesses and now it is time for the big reveal. The top left hand is the Logitech C922. The top right hand is the Logitech Brio and the bottom left hand is of course the Sony a6400. So with this being said, you can see the quality of each one, get a good look at what to expect, how crisp each of these cameras are. And, uh, and here's the side-by-side -side comparison. One thing that you will probably wanna note is that these are all shrunk down to a fourth of the size they normally are. If you look at all three of these cameras, you'll notice that uh, when they're shrunk down, they actually look even clearer. They actually look even better. In fact, I'm looking over here right now and they're all pretty close. In fact, the Brio looks fantastic, especially shrunk down to this level. Brio's looking really good. The, the Of course, the A6400 looks fantastic, but you'll notice that the background of the Brio is not blurred out and the A6400 is blurred, right? It's blurred. It's got a nice creamy background to it and uh, even creamier if we bump up the the lighting background. So something to consider there. Of course, the, uh, the C922, it's... Uh, you know, the same thing as the Brio, except for it doesn't have as good of a color spectrum that the colors aren't as natural and uh, it, it still doesn't feel as sharp to me. The focus doesn't feel quite as sharp on the, the C922. So um, anyway, with that being said, you guys, here's the side by side comparison. Hopefully you guys, um, you know, like this and hopefully this is helpful to you to see kind of the progression, right? You start out with the with the the normal C920 or C922. You go to the Brio over here and then you move up to the Sony a6400 as kind of the, the DSLR professional grade looking camera. And it's not necessary guys either. I want you to know this, with all three of these cameras, you don't have to upgrade. If you've got a webcam of any kind, or let's say you get this Logitech C920 and you're happy with the way it looks, you're happy that it works for your stream and you're usually down in a face cam anyway, you're not always doing big, you know, full screen type of video content. You don't need to get these other two cameras. You, you, you don't have to. 
Um, it's really what works best for you. They're not required, but if you're doing it and you're doing it full time or you're doing it and you're taking it super serious and you really wanna take it to the next level, then going to a DSLR is not a bad option. It's actually a great option. And if you are making YouTube content, that's the other big reason why I got this camera is I was like, I'm gonna make YouTube videos for everybody talking about streaming stuff. So I thought, you know what? For YouTube, I'm gonna go ahead and step up and get that bigger quality, uh, better quality camera and uh, just have a little bit more options. Plus you can go out and vlog with it and things like that. So that's another reason why I stepped up to the DSLR. The Brio was working just fine for me when I when I was streaming with the Brio and it wasn't until I decided to start up the YouTube channel and, and start making content for you guys on YouTube that I decided to come to this camera right here. And so uh, anyway, hopefully this has been helpful and this side-by-side -side comparison gives you a better perspective on which camera you should be picking up as your next streaming camera. So with that being said, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful to you guys. If you like this video, smash that like button to help get this video out to as many people as possible. If you like this channel, smash the subscribe button. And if you wanna see when these videos come out, smash that notification bell to be one of the first to know when a video is live. And again, I am live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Eagle Garrett almost every day. So you can come check us out over there. We'd love to have you in our community. Drop that follow, join the flock, and let me know what's on your mind or, or what kind of thoughts you have on your own streaming equipment. Uh, also, guys, I am on Twitter all the time, so tweet at me, at Eagle Garrett. I'd love to have you uh, with us on Twitter. We're also on Instagram. You can come check us out on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm on Facebook as well, so if that's your thing, drop a uh, drop a like on Facebook. Also, guys, links to everything we've talked about in this video will be down in the description, so make sure you jump down there, and they're Amazon affiliate links, so they all help support this channel and my Twitch channel and all the stuff I'm doing on these platforms. So if you want to get any of this stuff or uh, get anything in general, use those links and it will help me out. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, last but not least, guys, we have a great Discord. It's called The Flock, and we've got almost 10,000 members of our Discord. We've got places in there to talk about technology and music and games and, and, and everything you can imagine, including promoting your YouTube or Twitch channels. We've got places that you can do that as well. Um, and check out other content creators and other streamers that are with us in our community. So join us on Discord. Links for all of that in the description of the channel. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Rock on. Peace out. God bless. And last but not least, we got a, we get a see flare. See, see yeah. Oh, he's doing it right there, right there, right there, right there. There, you're doing the search, the search thing or something. Here, here, give me, tilt it a little bit so I can get a uh, rocket on him. Get him, boys. Got him, he's down, he's down. I rocket him from a helicopter, bro. Somebody clip it. Okay. Fish. Ready, ready. Hop out, hop out. Hop out, guys. I'm out, I'm out. 